Th thank you very much, Richard. Yes, indeed. We've got our uh, our racing for our Classic Modern Motorsport Club Super Saloons. Now, already on the rolling laps, we'll quickly rattle through the grid here. Brilliant variety of cars here. We were supposed to have Mark Diathlon pole position in the uh, Super Impreza, but his car, unfortunately, looks like it will be a non-starter. So, de facto pole goes to Rob Birdie's Ford Escort WRC. Uh, second row of the grid, Alex Sidwell in, yes, the Holden Commodore V8 supercar. You will see that in a second, alongside Adrian Bradley in the BMW M3. Two more M3s with Peter Selden and Paul Watson come next on the third row of the grid. And another BMW of Ronan Bradley alongside Martin Reynolds and his old school Ford Escort. Then it's Nick Sutton in the Mitsubishi Evo 10 and Matt Rowling in the Honda Civic Type R that round out the top 10. Martin Scott's VW Golf alongside the fantastic sounding Volvo C30. Uh, it's not more like a two-litre right? four-cylinder rather than a five, but I was hearing that on the pit wall earlier on. Brilliant sounding car in 12. But it's Neil Gardner and in his Honda Civic and Jack Whitehead in a... BMW M3. Steve Dan's VW Scirocco comes next, along with Paul Restall's Ford Sierra RS Cosworth. Liam Pauling in a little potent Citroen Saxo to start 17th, alongside Graham Richardson's Honda Civic. Ken, Ken Angel in his BMW 328 Coupe, and Dominic Ryan in his Ford Fiesta ST150 start in P20. Dave Charles to set Leon. Jeremy Sutton in his Benson Hedges inspired livery Ford Sierra Cosworth RS500 starts in 22nd. But it's James Seal in a Fiesta. Alex Baldwin. I think he's also known as Alex Afro, I think, in the in 24th position, one of his first races in P24. Angelo Massanetto, in his Hitchin Saxo, comes next from Gideon September, one of the best racing names in motorsport, according to Dave Goddard. Uh, shout out to Dave. I think it's Richard Skelsley and Ian Seal, who rounds out the 28 cars that will start this grid. A wonderful variety of machines. It is a combined grid for the Classic and Modern Motorsport Club Southern's Super Saloon Series and Southern Tin Tops. So the Super Saloons are in the mix. You've got T two fantastic cars at the front, two of my favourite on the grid. Rob Burley's fire-spitting Ford Escort WRC and a genuine Australian V8 supercar. That's Alex Simple, who's very much a Aussie V8 enthusiast. He's got here a proper V8 supercar and that car lines up essentially technically third on the grid, but it's now almost sort of second. But Rob Burley will start on the front row alone as there is no Mark Diaz in his super impressive. So it is de facto pole for Rob Burley. There are BMW M3s. There's a little, in fact, I thought it was an Escort. It's a little Ford Anglia as well. So it's not a Ford Escort. It's an Anglia from Martin Reynolds. You've got the Evo 10 there, Jeremy Sutton. You've got Honda Civics. You've got Susan Saxos, four Fiestas, all sorts of cars in this fantastic series. CMMC Super Saloons and Southern Tin Tops blasts them to life at Stest as they head down the pit straight towards Richie for the first time. And it is the two most powerful cars in the grid, I think, arguably, which is the Ford Escort WRC and the Holden V8 supercar that turned into Richie's for the first time. Everyone a bit tentative, looking to try and find their own piece of real estate through Richie's corner, but I think they've just about got through without too much drama. And now they turn their way out of the right hand into the hairpin. So Birdie leads under pressure for second place is already um, Alex Sidwell from Adrian Bradley in the BMW M3. That's the big green car with the time attack uh, strip a lot across its uh, windscreen. So Ken Angel in the Number 37 BMW. Max Abbas that are picking their way through the order. They come up through the left hand at Palmer down towards Agostini for the first time. So, in fact, oh, actually, what's happened to Rob Burley? He's completely disappeared. In fact, you think he's in the, in the pack a little bit there because through has gone to Alex Simple and to believe. No, there he is on the right hand side. Uh, Rob Burley has a problem. Left hand side, right hand side. On the right hand side of the screen, the car's slowing up. I'm afraid it's Rob Burley, so after two or three corners of glory, I'm afraid the Ford Escort WRC has become a little bit temperamental and has expired on him just on the run down towards Agostini, unfortunately. You know, that means Alex Sibbo now takes the lead. His main battle is going to be with Adrian Bradley. Big lock up from one of the BMWs on the left-hand side into Oggies. Stood on the brakes and couldn't get the car stopped, but thankfully he managed to anchor it up just enough to get itself turned in. Good battle there between 147 and 27. That's Matt Rowling's Honda Civic Tire Pass, grappling away with the uh, that's uh, possibly that was another one of the BMWs I think. But who was that? Looking at was 27. Uh, Peter Selden's BMW that he's battling with there. Now look at the rest of the pack. Look at that. Two more different cars you couldn't see: a Ford Anglia and a Mitsubishi Evo 10, and they're both quite evenly matched. And it's the a little Anglia that's running away from the Evo. It's a wonderful mix of cars in this series. It's wonderful to see CMMC with us here this weekend and this brilliant variety that they always bring to the race meetings whenever they're on a BRSTC timetable. Never felt to disappoint. Lots of proper hot hatches here, ST150s and uh, hot Honda Civic Type R. A couple of Citroen Saxos in there as well. All sorts going on here. Towards the front, it's the big BMWs and V8 supercars that are leading the way. Alex Sibwell continues to head on as he thunders past my commentary box position. Beautiful sounding, whole proper Aussie V8 sound. I think there's a problem there for the VW Scirocco. Yeah, there's a bit of steam and smoke coming out the back of the 34 car. That is Steve Dan in the Scirocco. I'm afraid that car's going straight into pit lane. So, unfortunately, 
his race has also run as well. So Mark, so Rob, so Alex Sibwell then leads the way, has the fastest lap of the race, the first flying lap because they all have a rolling start. It's then Sibwell who leads. It's Adrian Bradley in second place. It's Ronan Bradley up into third. So it's BMW's now second and third. As we see there, a move going on for another one of the BMWs in the pack for the Volvo C30 involved. And then Ken Angel also getting involved with the Sierra Sapphire Cosworth that's also in the mix there too. So run down the order. So Sibwell leads then. It's Adrian Bradley second. Ronan Bradley third. Martin Reynolds in the Ford Anglia. And it's Nick Sutton in the Evo 10. Paul Watson's BMW 6th, Peter Selden's BMW 7th, and Martin Scott's VW Golf in 8th position. Ninth place is the number 147 class leading Honda Civic. And in 10th place you've also got Gardner and his Honda Civic too, so Honda's 9th and 10th at the moment as we make our way around on this second lap. Bit late, of course, comes Steve down. That car still smoking it a little bit towards the back, so unfortunately, that car did not. Uh, well, it's going back out, so whatever issue it had, it seems to either be resolved or they told him just keep driving around and get on with it, and if there's an issue, then come back in. Back straight. See the power differences here, the, the thumping turbo on that, and the flame spitting out that Ford Sierra Cosworth. As it charges down the two Honda Civic, the Civic, the BMW, and the Volvo C30. In fact, he goes straight on. So the Ford Sierra either couldn't stop or had an issue, which has forced him off the road. But that's quite unusual. <laughs> Wanders his way back onto the circuit. That was, I remind myself who that was. Number eight is, I can't remember right, that's Paul Restall and his Ford Sierra. It just, he, re he rejoins in front of Jeremy Sutton's Cosworth RS500 example in the same sort of Benson Hedges livery that the likes of Tony Longhurst and Alan Jones used to race back in the Australian touring car days, back when it was Group 8. But still, it is Alex Sibwell who has the lead by two seconds from Adrian Bradley's E46 M3 E36 BMW of Ronan Bradley in third place. Side by side between 223 and 75. 223, Alex, Alex Ball wins Honda Civic. Strapping with James Seal in his super tuned motorsport prepared. Fiesta ST150. This series predominantly calls Brown Hatch its home. I think it developed out of what was the Bark Southeastern Sensor series, but they've now formed their own uh, c series with uh, Richard Culverhouse of Classic and Modern Motorsport Club, and they formed their own Southern Division. And since then, it's been quite a success. They also look after the Intermark, the Intermark Silhouettes, which will be out at the Formula Ford Festival next weekend at Brown's Hatch. But it's their super saloons and tin tops that are here at Stetterton. Turn the way up to the hairpin. There's one of the little Citroen Saxos that's uh, looking for the hairpin. Also 29 in there as well, which is the BMW Compact of Richard Skelsey. That's an E46 Compact. The rest of the pack heading through. It's quite spread out a little bit here early in this first part of the race. It's only a 15-minute race here at Snetterton. Alex Baldwin has managed to complete the move on James Seal, so he's now got through into what is now just where they're battling over here on the screen. It was 21st position, so they got, they got almost on the, on the cusp of the top 20. Still, it looks like Alex Sibwell still leads the way. Here's another the BMW, it's number three BMW, the one that had the huge lockout, Jack Whitehead. Now, that's a different BMW I've seen him in before. That's a proper M346 now. Uh, that carries on. More battling here. We've got the 87 car of uh, Graham Richardson in his Honda Civic. Just behind him, Ken Angel. And there's Jeremy Sutton in the Ford Sierra RS500 Cosworth. Coming this out at the moment in 17th position. He's chasing a possible top 15 finish. Climbing his way back up the order is Paul Restall in his with a huge rear wing on the back. And he's got back into the top 15 now, which is about 40 position now. Still, Alex Sibwell leads the way, but it's a new far snap of the race last time by from Adrian Bradley. He brought the gap down to 1.5 seconds. And Ronan Bradley still holding on to third position in third. Nick Sutton's up to fourth past the Ford Anglia of Martin Reynolds. As we continue to look at Jeremy Sutton's 
Sierra chasing after the Ken Angel BMW and Graham Richardson's Honda Civic. There goes one of the Citroen Saxos behind him as well. That, I think, is Liam Pauling. The other car out there, which is Angelo Massonetto, which is the Brazilian driver, I think. Or half Italian, half Brazilian, I think. I saw a Brazilian flag in the paddock earlier on. So I think that would be Angelo Massonetto. I remember that car from earlier races, too. So, yeah, that's the Jack Whitehead, who is keeping ahead of... Neil Gardner in his white and purple Honda Civic. That's a battle they're having over uh, the final top 10 spot. There are also various classes in this series. There's lots of different class leaders and, 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 and finishers in this one. Uh, for the record for who's wearing which class, as we see a couple more battles, two more BMWs going at it. I think that's uh, Paul Watts and Peter Selden. And they're having a scrap over that is sixth position. So Peter Selden's car is the 27 car. That's the, that's the red BMW with the sort of wraparound rear wing on the back. And then the sort of more traditional rear wing. That's Paul Watson with the big black rear wing, the orange BMW in front of him. They're having a nice little tussle over P6 at the moment. Meanwhile, the Holden, Holden V8 supercar thunders its way past the pits again. The gap has come down once more. It's now come down by another... About, basically, it's been halved because the gap is now... What was 1.5? It's now 0.8 in a second. So it's come down pretty substantially. Side by side again. Two BMWs going into combat here. Both of the E36 BMWs, both of them M3s. Slightly different specifications, but Watson manages to hold on to the inside line. And three goes back into P6 ahead of Selden. I think that toss is going to go on for the rest of the race, I wonder. So just in terms of class leaders, class S is Alex Sidwell. Class B is Ronan Bra leader is, Re is Adrian Bradley and his BMW, second overall. As we see James Seal and Alex Bourbon once again getting into combat. Ford Fiesta versus Honda Civic. Uh, Class A is being led by Nick Sutton's Evo Mitsubishi Evo 10. The Martin Reynolds Ford Anglia is leading Class C in fifth position. Uh, Class D is being led by the Peter Selden BMW. The T2, which is the first of the tin top cars, so this is all super saloons in the first day. The first tin top car on the field is the T2 class car of Matt Rowling in the Honda Civic Type R. He leads the tin top category, uh, portion of the race. Uh, it's uh, class lead also for T, in class T1, is Dave Charlton say at Leon. He's currently in 13th position. Uh, T3, it's Dominic, class lead is Dominic Ryan down in 17th place. And the TP, I think which is the T production class, is being led by Ian Seal, who's having that battle. That's actually for the class lead between himself and Alex Baldwin in TP class. So, for actually, Baldwin getting back through now. So, these are actually battling over a class lead here, which is quite... We might have to keep a, keep us a small eye on whilst we look at the leaders. Um, I would be intrigued to see what the leaders are up to, because the gap last time by, as I said, was about eight tenths of a second. So, you can see a bit of a, a unique battle here between a Holden Commodore V8 supercar and a pumped-up E46 BMW M3. That'd be quite fascinating. Here's more scrapping. I think that's Liam Pauling. The leaders have just gone through down the pit straight as Alex Sibler responds to the... Attack from Adrian Bradley, 2 minutes 6.831. See here, Pauling now battling away with Gideon September in front of him. That's Gideon in the, num the number 80 black Honda Civic in front of him. Turning out of the right hander. Voggies, back through Williams. And we see here Ken Angel has also now been caught by Jeremy Sutton's Sierra RS500. There it is. It's one of my favourite cars of all time, the Sierra RS500. I am a bit of a, uh, have a bit of a soft spot for a fast Ford. And there's one or two in this field, particularly the RS500. It's a shame that Rob, Rob Burley's Escort Cosworth also dropped out on the first lap as well, because Escort Cosworth is definitely one of my all-time favourites. So three minutes and 20 seconds left on the clock or so. Still, Alex Sibwell, who leads the way from, from Adrian Bradley. I would like to see the V8 supercar on the screen, because it has, since he took the lead, it simply just hasn't taken off into the, into the distance, but it is still only 1.5 seconds ahead of Adrian Bradley, and Adrian's got to try and respond in that car, in that BMW. Haven't seen the leaders all that much, but we've been looking quite a lot, of, uh, looking quite a lot at the battles going on in the mid-pack, which is good to see, because it means we get to see plenty of different cars scrapping over positions. But 
three slightly different cars. You've got a Honda Civic Type R EP3, you've got an E36 BMW 3 Series, and a Ford Sierra RS500 Cosmo. They're all sort of closing up together, which is quite interesting. Different generations of car. In fact, there it is. And Alex Sidwell. Alex Sipos taking it almost quite leisurely in towards the complex. It's almost been caught off guard by Adrian Bradley. Up the inside he goes. Alex tries to respond here. It's going to be a proper drag race and the power of that Holden V8. Seating thump past the BMW straight back and back towards him. I thought for a second that the Holden had a problem, but look at the way in which the Holden just stretches away on the, on the, on the straights. What a fantastic machine that car is. Then immediately has to stand on the anchors to get it stopped for turn one. It's not often Australian V8 supercars leave, the, leave Australia, but... We're very glad to Alec, guys like Alex Sidwell and also Andy Robertson, who's got a Ford Falcon aficionado. He's got a couple of them himself. Very grateful that they were able to bring these cars over from Australia over to the UK. I think Alex has a fleet of five different Commodores. He's got another one on, on delivery as well. So he's building quite a collection. There's a nice little car. That's the Ford Anglia of Martin Reynolds. He's also got a Ford Escort Mark II with some quite nice wide wheel arches. That's quite a regular in the modified Ford series from time to time, which will be out next weekend for their second, their, their, yeah, I think their final rounds of the year at the Formula Ford Festival. As you see, Sidwell here just blasting past the number seven Ian Seal. Uh, the Ian Seal uh, Fiesta. Ah, sorry, it's James Seal that was battling. Sorry, not Ian Seal. It was forgive me. There's two Seals in the uh, production in the T production class. And it was James Seal that Alex, Alex Borbidson battling with, not Ian Seal. That was Ian Seal that the Holden Commodore has just lapped. So forgive me for the misidentification there. There's Neil Gardner. Here's Honda Civic. He currently sits at the moment in 12th overall, second in class T2. So looking good. Here is our race leader. Whenever you like a motorsport, you can't deny it. These V8 supercars are striking things. They look good and they sound good as well. These huge thumping, booming V8s in these cars. You don't really have very much like it here in the UK, but whenever you see one, whether it's on TV or even in person, as we're lucky to have here, they are quite special things. So, as I say, thank you to the likes of Andy Roberts and Alex Simple, and those who have got these cars outside of Australia, because we get to enjoy them here in series like this. Whoa, and Adrian Bradley really puts the lock stops on. Had to get very sideways to try and catch up to the back of the Holden Commodore, but again, the power of that V8, which makes a beautiful noise as it comes past the commentary box here. And Alex Sidwell sets another new fast lap of the race just to hammer the point. And whoops, that's the rear bumpers off the car. So the rear bumpers completely come clean. Well, at least if it was hanging off, he might have got a, uh, a black and orange flag. At least it's completely come off the road. It might well might, might be a yellow down there, possibly just to cover Dairy, perhaps. But I wonder if that's going to be something. Meanwhile, this battle of the sixth has been going on for quite a while. This is between of course, Paul Watson and Peter Selden. As they come up now onto the pit straight to start the last lap of the race. This battle continues to rage. It's still over P6. Watson in the orange BMW with the big black rear wing. And it's the, rapper, it's the BMW M3, the red one behind. That is Peter, uh, Peter Selden. Yellow flag is indeed out for Debris. There is the bumper from Adrian Bradley that's just uh, decided to extract itself from the back of the E46 M3. As we now look back to our leader, Alex Sibwell, who is... There seems to be a difference between which where each car has its strengths. The Holden most definitely is better on the straights in the hands of Alex Sibwell, whereas on the corners, Adrian Bradley does just close up a little bit. I think he's Alex is a bit more tentative on the brakes than Adrian is, is, is able to be in terms of being able to brake later. And I wonder, on the, on the straight, Alex wants to put his foot down and just pull away. So he certainly wants to try and improve on that going forwards. Still another race coming up later on this afternoon. So there's plenty of time for them to get these cars back in proper, back in the setup that they need. And still, Sidwell continues on. He's also got past. They're in the middle of the T production battle right now. James Seal and Alex Baldwin, which I think is going to go the way of Baldwin. But Adrian Bradley continues his pursuit. He won't give up until the checkered flag, which is going to be imminent as they come up through the last couple of corners. And Alex Sidwell is, I'm sure, ideally for him, and also quite relievingly, is going to be able to pick up a race victory here. Bradley's getting very close towards the end, but the power of the Hold Commodore is going to be more than enough to get into the chequered flag. In the first race of the day for the CMMC, Southern Saloons and Tin Tops, Alex Sidwell takes victory in the thunderous Holden Commodore. A brilliant win for the Holden. Sidwell wins. It is Adrian Bradley in second place, and Ronan Bradley in the second of the, their team BMWs will come across the line in P3. Here he comes. 
P3 for Ronan Bradley. So it's both Bradleys on the podium. It'll be fourth for Nick Sutton in his Mitsubishi Evo 10. And the fifth place for this wonderful little at Ford Anglia. It's uh, small, but it's potent. And it's got quite a bit of kick in it in a straight line as well. Now, as for P6, that's a change between Selden and Watts and on the last lap. Selden got through. So it's going to be fifth position for Adrian Reynolds. Sixth for Paul Watson. Seventh for Peter Selden. And then 8th for Martin Scott, ninth for Matt Rowling, and 10th for Jack Whitehead in the his BMW M3. Here comes Martin Scott. I'm not sure if that's the Martin Scott. No, I don't think it is. I think he, Martin Scott I've seen before. That's, I reckon that's the BMR logo on the side. He's usually been in the BMW M3 as Paul Restle's had quite an eventful race. But he's got past Jack Whitehead. So Restle's got past Whitehead for 10th in the end. So Martin Scott takes 8th, Rowling 9th in the Civic. And for 10th, right at the death, it's then going to be Paul Restle who takes away the final top 10 spot for Jack Whitehead and his, I think for me at least, new BMW. Bit of a wave there from Paul Restle. An eventful race for him, but he managed to get home in one piece, as did also, of course, number three car, Jack Whitehead. And we'll be able to confirm class winners as we go through through the rest of the results. A few more cars, I think there's a few more cars to come through still. No, that's the last car that's come through, I think. One or two more, I think, still. Oh no, one or two cars still to come through to complete their class wins. Dave Charlton will come through. He wins T1 in the Tin Tops. Class win for him. Jeremy Sutton comes through in the Sierra. And then the next class of wins to come through are going to be Dominic Ryan. So there goes Ken Angel and Graham Richardson. The next class wins to come through are going to be the three cars left to cross the line. They're going to be Dominic Ryan's Ford Fiesta. The Citroen Saxo of Liam Pauling, and then we've got the Alex Baldwin Honda Civic who will come through to take victory in Class T production. In fact, they're just coming through the final couple of the corners now. So across the line will come our final three cars to take the flag. So it will be a class win for Dominic Ryan in the Fiesta. There goes the Citroen Saxo, and another class win also for Alex Baldwin in the Honda Civic. Congratulations to him and all our class winners in the CMMC Super Saloons and Tin Tops for their first race of two for the day. So, all cars across the line that have been still running at the end. We lost three cars in the end, sadly, but they will be back for more shortly, later on this afternoon. So, here's the result then. Alex Sibwell get, get, takes victory for the Holden Commodore, both overall and in the Super Saloons and in class. Adrian Bradley second, also wins his class and a Ronan Bradley in third. Then fourth, fifth and sixth for more class winners. Nick Sutton's Evo 10, the Ford Anglia of Martin Reynolds and Peter Selden's BMW winning classes A, C and D respectively. Seventh for Paul Watson, eighth for Martin Scott, ninth for T2 class winner Nick Rowling. Matt Rowling, excuse me, and uh, Paul Rest on his Ford Sierra Cosworth. It's Jack Whitehead in the BMW, Neil Gardner 12th in the Civic, Dave Charlton wins his class in the Seat Leon, Jeremy Sutton Sierra Cosworth, Sierra RS500, the Civic of Gardner, then Char uh, sorry, um, Richardson, Angel, Dominic Ryan wins his class in the Ford Fiesta, ahead of Pauling in the Saxo, Alex Baldwin wins his class in uh, 19th position, Gideon September 20th, then James Seal, Richard Skelsey, Angelo Massonetto, and Ian Seal round out the 20. Four finishers that took the checkered flag, and we lost Matthews, Dan, and Rob Burley as well. Right, time to head to part Furway and have a chat with our top three in the CMMC Southern Saloons and Tin Tops. They are down with Richard John Neal. Thanks very much, Scott. Slightly different approach because these guys have come back to Paddock and we have a word with Adrian Bradley. I've not met these guys before. Are you Adrian or Ronan? Ronan, that's Adrian. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing. Oh, he's going to have a quick word with, with Josh. Are we gonna we're gonna fight for it? I think. <laughs> Adrian, well done. Cheers, thank you. Uh, are you two, I take it you two are brothers, by the look of it. Yeah, yeah. He just saw one. <laughs> Very clearly. What a race! You were really having a t yeah, taking it to done. Alex yeah, and yeah, around the so. around Corum, very yeah, close yeah. indeed. And then he sort of kind of powered we've away. Got, but we've got the corner speed. We just haven't got the legs on the straights. So I was just trying to I was trying to get in front of him before the main straight to slow him down before the end. And then I was I was going to take another lunge, but we we both lost it a few times out the back. Made it interesting race. But no, it's good. I enjoyed it. What's good. happened to the back end of the car? I honestly, don't know. <laughs> well, I seen it on the last lap coming down the straight. The bump bumper was sitting in the middle of the track. So yeah, I, I don't know, but he'll be all right. Easily repaired. Is work. this a car you've built and developed yourself, or one yeah, that you've you bought? Fourth, fourth or fifth year now of having it. Um, yeah, just just learning, learning all the time. It's just getting quicker and quicker, or I'm getting quicker and quicker. Yeah, tra track time does it. Yeah, it's the best thing. The car, you, you've got out of the car, and it doesn't look like you've been in a race. You look fairly yeah, cool about it. So you're not working hard enough. Yeah, no, I'm definitely working hard enough. Yeah, there's not much I can do, like I said, on the straights. It's just um, yeah, whatever I can on the bends. There's still a bit more in it, I think. But yeah, I went out a bit too hot on the tires, trying to the, the, the old used tires. 
Uh, we look forward to seeing you for race two. Uh, nice right to meet you, Adrian. Great race. Well done. Uh, we'll have a quick word with Ronan in, in third, and then we'll go to first and have a word with Alex Silver. Ronan, good to meet you. He's already said you're the slower brother, which yeah, I think is well, very, ve very unfair, but is, <laughs> could it be the car as well? Uh, they're, they're similar on power. He's got a slight little bit more, but not much more. Um, but um, he just, he's a better driver, simple as that. So I tried my best. I held on to them for a few laps, but uh, I was hoping him and Alex would have a bit more of a slow each other down, but it didn't quite happen, unfortunately. But it was good. I'm happy. I'm really happy with that. It's a, best result I could have hoped for so is your car developed between the pair of you as well uh, the what sorry was your car developed between the pair of you yeah both link Adrian got his first um, and then I got the 36 um, and we've gradually over the years I've had it about six years now doing bits and pieces to it keep trying to catch him but um, <laughs> we get close some days but other days they just think they're corner exit and everything is really good yeah. so they're gone so yeah. it's been good Roll does on. it work with those cars i mean does it do you get it as a road car or did you get it as a race car uh, it was partly race so like a track based car when we first bought it yeah. um we have a cage in it bits and pieces and now we've turned it into a full race car cage seats harnesses fire extinguishers all that mandatory stuff that you have to have to yeah. go racing basically so I think you've got another interview because Josh wants to have a word. He's over there for the circuit comms. But Ronan, thank you very much. Good stuff, mate. Well done. We'll see you for race uh, race two a little bit later on. We're going to nip across and have a word with Alex Sidwell, who took the win. Alex, great to see you. Thank you. I'll keep this side. Hopefully, it's the right side for the camera. Congratulations on on the win and fastest lap. Adrian was was giving you a bit of a workout there. Yeah, he does. He's uh, I've had a workout with him before at Brands. But I just said to the commentator, he's very, he's very fair. Um, I know, like with Rod, they're going to give each other racing room. Yeah. If he got past me fairly, I'd give him the room, which I did. But obviously the straight line speed of the hold and just I'd, I didn't need to push and battle because I just thought I'd just get a straight line speed and get away. Um, but yeah, he was good on the brakes. He was good through the slow stuff where the hold was not nice. Um, and it's still, it's still quite slippery out there, to be honest. It isn't really warm. Um, we just checked the slicks. I've got barely any, any grip at all. But it, good. I enjoyed that. It was good. Didn't think I'd get the win. I've, I'm fortunate for Rod, um, but I didn't think I was going to get the win. You've got to finish that, haven't you? I mean, that's well, the that's, thing. Yeah, so I get the fastest laps. If you, you parked up at the side of the road, that's no good, is it? No. Yeah. Um, in terms of uh, the, this, this championship, I mean, it's all great. I mean, and thank everyone for watching the live stream, which is great. But I, I was watching towards the end of the pit wall. You have to be here to properly enjoy these cars. Well, I think so. I mean, I do make a wonderful lot. I don't get to hear that because I have to wear the plugs in my ears. Otherwise, I end up can't speak for two days or hear for two days. But yeah, generally, they're, they're like, they, everyone says to me they sound really nice. So hopefully everyone enjoys seeing them. Scott Woolwich tells me you've got a, a collection of these or a fair few. Are they difficult to get hold of? What's the process in, in getting these cars? I think we've got an inward road now with a lot of people over there and we're taking it seriously. I think the Australians, unless you pump up the cash quick, they'll, they'll muck you around. Uh, you know, they think you're a time waster, a pommy time waster. But yeah, we've got a few. We've got a few. Yeah. Do you have to do much to, to, to get it, say, once you've got it out of the crate, to, to, to get it into race spec over here? No, they're, they're fairly set up, really. I mean, it's been service and just normal lube change and stuff like that. They're fairly easy to run. They're actually cheaper to run than the Cosworth I used to have. Really? Yeah, much cheaper to run. Tyres are the most expensive thing, but and they don't last long, obviously, on a heavy car. We'll get to those meeting at those tyres, and they're, and they're, they're binned. But apart from that, they're, they're yeah, cheap cars to run. And do you have, have your eyes on a, on a next purchase to add? Yeah, we've got a ZB on, ZB on order. Um, that's, uh, that's due. It got smashed up last week at Bathurst, unfortunately. But it is being repaired for the next race, so I'm sure. So we'll see that 2024, oh, end of 23. So 24 season, basically, the race now. Well, something to look forward to. That's great. Alex, congratulations on the win. Thanks Thank for the right. chat Good very much indeed. I've got cold hands. Cold hands, warm heart, yeah. we hope. Uh, there we go. Alex Sebwell, who won the uh, first race for our guest formula this weekend. And we'll see them later on this afternoon. There is a little bit of track action now. I know people get frustrated and say, why don't you cover qualifying? Um, the cameramen need a break around the circuit. They've been working hard and they've got a three hour race to do a little bit later on. So apologies that, you know, budgets aren't such that we can cover absolutely everything on race day. But it does give you and the cameraman and us a chance to have a little bit of break of a break. So what's going on currently, just to know, let you know what you're missing. If you want to go on to TSL, you can follow the timing. It's the qualifying for the BRSCC Mazda Endurance race. So it's a non-championship race. 40 minutes. It's going to happen at the end of the day and it will see the mark ones the mark threes and the mark fours all, all on circuit together you know uh, not all of them because i think we've got 100 cars in, in the paddock but the drivers that want to do an extra race a fun race if you like to, to finish off the end of the year so they're out qualifying now then we go into a lunch break and then we'll be back with effectively sort of a repeat of what we've had this afternoon but with uh, this morning but with the addition of the citroen c1 three hour race and we'll be back on stream around about 12.15 so keep your browsers open 
get yourself a nice lunch and we look forward to your company again this afternoon as I say around about quarter past noon so uh, from from all of us down here Jeremy I ca I'm a cameraman uh, myself Scott and the whole team will be back with you in a short while thanks for watching and catch up with you after the break